Welcome to Tavetta Talks. I am Tavetta. In this segment, I am talking about Gary Greatness, the opportunity to shine the spotlight on people who inspire me. Joining me for this conversation is my roommate from college, Takesha Brown. Welcome and how are you? I am great. And thank you for having me. How are you? I am doing well. Let's talk about growing up in Gary, Indiana. What are some of your fondest memories? Oh, being a kid, like being a kid and just living life. So I lived on, I lived on the west side of Gary. I lived in Terrytown. And I lived in Glen Park. What I miss more than anything is being a kid and just playing. And in all parts of the city, it was always the same. It was amazing. Like we just played outside. We rode our bikes. We rode in the grass. We walked to the candy stores. Like we just, we were kids. We were, we did not rush to get old. Like we, we really had an actual childhood. It was in dance contests and skating screaming wheels you know the village you know <laughs> I could go on and on but that's what I miss about uh about Gary like those were my fondest memories uh growing up thank you so much for sharing those fond memories especially the rink that was a staple in the community <laughs> yes the rink yes the rink it brought everyone together so I want to talk about schools what schools did you attend in Gary um I only attended the best schools in Gary which were Ernie Powell Elementary <laughs> K through six I went to Ernie Powell Elementary K through six, and then I went to Emerson School for the Visual and Performing Arts from seven through twelve. So yeah. Okay, I'll let you have that since this is your interview. <laughs> Can you tell me what are some of the lessons you learned from your teachers in Gary? I have been out of school for over twenty five years, so it's been a long time. But it's one in particular teacher that um jogs my memory and his name is Mr. Becker and what Mr. Becker taught me was that you cannot judge a book by its cover that's that's what he taught me that's a beautiful life lesson that you can take with you forever pretty much Mm -hmm. so very well spoken thank you for sharing that I want to talk about your profession, because in addition to being an entrepreneur and owner of a dreams boutique, Mm -hmm. what is your profession? I am an educator. So I started out as a teacher first, and then I taught for 10 and a half years, and then I became an instructional coach for two years. Then I was a vice principal for five years. And I am currently serving as a principal. This is my third year serving as a principal. And so it was a huge deal in my life because it was my first time going to the principal's office and I was happy about it. I wasn't (laughs) nervous when I got to visit you in the principal's office. So Uh. thank you for that. Who inspired you to become a principal? I would say... Like I stated, like I kind of share with you what my matriculation was like, you know, how I transitioned from each position that like teaching wasn't um, challenging for me anymore. So that's when you really know it's time for you to shift or it's time for you to move. So in each position that I've had, like teaching for 10 and a half years, I had become a a master teacher. So it wasn't challenging anymore. So I needed something that was more challenging. So then that's when I transitioned to the instructional coach. The instructional coach is one who works with teachers, so teach teachers. And then that wasn't as challenging. So I transitioned to being an administrator, a vice principal, where I'm over several teachers and I'm I'm coaching them. And eventually, you know, once I felt like I mastered that, then it was time for me to transition to my own school. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm running my own school for the past three years. So it's about knowing when it's time to move. If you stay longer than what you're supposed to stay, 
the impact is not going to be as great. So the the key thing for me is that I want to be able to make an impact. So I feel like that I transitioned at the proper time. Just like now, I'm currently working on a PhD. Um, I pray to be done within the next year. Okay. So much in what you just shared. I'm I'm sorry if I was speaking up. When it's time to grow and go. That's so Mm -hmm. phenomenal. Thank you for sharing that, first of all. Mm -hmm. Next, I want to know, the year that was 2020, how did you survive as a principal, educator, human, a person with a heart who cares so deeply about children? Did you see that exhale? Yes. (laughs) I did a lot of praying, in all honesty. Like I did a lot of praying, a lot of reflecting, a lot of thinking outside of the box because we were teaching um, and I was running a school online, you know, so I was still held to the same standard. So I did a lot of thinking outside the box, a lot of things that were not traditional, but I felt like it was best for kids you know, like I was making home visits to kids, taking, taking treats and things like that, trying to motivate them to get them to get online. That's professionally. And then for personally, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not realize how much physical touch made a difference. I really didn't realize that until I made a visit to one of my students' homes to drop off work. And when I went to go drop off the work at the student's house, he saw me and he said, Miss Brown, and keep in mind, we have on masks, we're not supposed to touch, social distance. He saw my face and was like, Miss Brown, and he ran to me and hugged me and I choked up. I choked up because I didn't realize the effect that their hugs had on me while being inside, I'm getting choked up. Mm. While being inside of the school. So I didn't realize how the physical touch really uh, made a difference. I'm like hugging on them and them hugging me. So for that reason, I sought counseling, I sought therapy. A lot of things began to come up for me, you know, during that time you know, and being away from the staff and the students, um, it, it, it impacted me um, a great deal. It really did. So I did seek out some help and talking through it. A lot of praying, like a lot of praying. Yeah. And it's because you have a heart and that is what makes you so beautiful. How much you genuinely care about children. I want to know, Today, what keeps you hopeful about educating children? Them. Everything I do, I think about, I have a school of two, about 270 students right now. Every day when I come to work, it's for them. It's, they are, they are our future they will lead the way. So because of them, that's why I do what I do every day. Even in the midst of my troubles, even in the midst of my woes, um, even in the midst of my misunderstandings, I push through for the sake of them, for all of them. Wow. Well, thank you for your consistency and your dedication all the way from Gary, Indiana. I send my love to you and my appreciation to you. I want to close with this question because I see your greatness. What would you say to someone who may ask the question, does greatness really come from Gary? You looking at her. (laughs) You looking at her, meaning me. And you're looking at the host of this show. Yes, greatness does come from Gary in all shapes and sizes and many forms. Uh, We are out here making a difference. We're making an impact. 
even if it isn't as many as we would like, sometimes we don't even know the impact that we're having, but you walking in purpose and you walking in favor, you have to trust that who is meant for, they'll receive it. Who is meant for, they will receive it. So, boop, period. (laughs) Well, I thank you for your time. I appreciate all that you do. Keep up the great work. Keep meeting expectations and beating expectations. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me in the conversation about Gary Greatness. Thank you for having me.